Hail, Thunder Faithful. It's Meal Near Monday, December 17th, and it's time for your weekly Thunder. <clears throat> the Revolution pushed back against this new authority when Raw started off with Seth Rollins taking a break from his Dean Ambrose feud to address acting GM Baron Corbin about his abuse of power and mentioned Raw's failing ratings and attendance and flat out said Raw sucks now. Talk about speaking real truth to scripted power. Seth challenged him to an Intercontinental Championship match, which Corbin made a tables, ladders, and chairs match. Even with newly minted superstar turned ref Heath Slater trying to rig it, Seth still managed to retrieve the belt from its perch in the end, defeating Corbin. Also, Bobby Roode and Chad Gable got another shot at the Raw Tag Team titles in another 3-on-2 against AOP, which they won by pinning a gloating Drake Ma Maverick. The stage is set for TLC, where the revolution would really come to a head. Baron Corbin waited for the 10 count to be complete as he waited for Braun Strowman to not show up so he would be permanent GM by form forfeit. Only one thing, Strowman did show up, but with his elbow in a sling. Another thing, this is a TLC match, which is a no disqualification match. As such, the Raw Avengers assembled as Corbin was surrounded by Apollo Crews, Bobby Roode, Chad Gable, and Finn Balor. Heath Slater removed his ref jersey and gladly joined the team. They started hitting him with steel chairs, and when he tried to retreat, none other than Kurt Angle came out to block his way. Talk about Captain America coming out of the ice and into the team. They all beat the crap out of Corbin, and then Strowman put his boot on Corbin's chest and got the 1-2-3 pinfall. Now Corbin is no longer GM, and Strowman has another crack at Brock Lesnar in the Universal Championship in next month's Royal Rumble pay-per-view. To complete the victory, Finn Balor dispatched Drew McIntyre with Dolph Ziggler's unwanted help. More on that next week. And Elias beat Bobby Lashley in a ladder match and then got beaten up by Lashley and Leo Rush. The chairman himself, Vince McMahon, will be on Raw tonight for some shakeups, so we'll see if the show gets good again. Carmella and R-Truth beat Jinder Mahal and Alicia Fox in the Mixed Match Challenge, which got them all in all expenses paid vacation in the 30th spot in their respective Royal Rumbles, which gives them the best odd to win and main event WrestleMania. Both of these teams were winless until the elimination rounds came up, then they streaked. It's like if somehow the Cardinals and the Raiders were still able to meet up in this year's Super Bowl. Other matches had Buddy Murphy retaining the cruiserweight title, Ruby Riot and her squad paying dearly for disrespecting Natalia and her late father, Jim the Anvil Neidhart. Ronda Rousey retains the Raw Women's Championship against Nia Jax. Danny the Dick Kicker retaining his WWE title from AJ Styles even though he actually didn't do anything illegal in this match, which is shocking, and Dean Ambrose winning the Intercontinental Championship from Seth Rollins. This Shield feud isn't going to be over for a long time, but not as long as Corey Graves prying into Ambrose's wife and fellow commentator Renee Young's married life for answers as to why Dean does this. The main event match, wrapping it up, was the first ever triple threat TLC match for the SmackDown women's title. A hard-fought match that had Becky Lynch and Charlotte Flair at the top of the ladder until Ronda Rousey came out and pushed their ladder over as payback for Survivor Series, leaving it open for Asuka to claim the belt. Last week was the Elseworlds crossover going on to DC and comic booky stuff, which had plenty of wonderful appearances and Easter eggs, especially when they were in Arkham Asylum and left fans being really down for a potential Batwoman TV show and more of Lois and Clark for a new generation. At the end of the crossover, they announced next year's crossover will be Crisis on Infinite Earths, which brings it about five years earlier than expected. I got to catch Once Upon a Deadpool last week, and while some of the edits of Blood and Language just looked a little too new for my taste, it was still Deadpool 2, which is a movie that's a okay with me. The scenes with Deadpool and Fred Savage were hysterical and made up for the edits, and I'll gladly watch even more versions of Deadpool, even though there's three already, with the theatrical cut, the super duper cut, and this Once Upon a Deadpool PG-13 cut. The super duper cut is my favorite, but this version has one or two scenes from the Blu-ray, and the Ryan Reynolds end credit card has... Something the other two versions don't have, and concluded with a great Stanley tribute. If you love Deadpool 2 enough, check this version out too. 
I also got to catch in the early Amazon Prime screening of Aquaman, which is set to officially release this weekend, and it was like the first Thor movie story-wise, but improved upon. The visuals were incredible. What little they showed of the civilization in Justice League was nothing compared to the beauty of Atlantis in this movie. Momoa finally gets the full spotlight, and he nailed it. The tone of the movie was also as bright as this visual, which is amazing considering James Wan is the director and he's better known for horror, but he fully embraced the comic book and comic book movie genre. The one issue I had with someone's amount of screen time got an insurance from the mid credit scene, and there's just the mid credit scene, there's no post credit scene, so don't waste your time. So I'm hopeful they deliver in Aquaman 2. Also of note is Mara, played by Amber Heard, who isn't the most well-known and out-there hero in the movie or the comics in general, even though now she's queen of Atlantis in these current comics, but I digress. But she's not that well-known in a world that has Wonder Woman and Harley Quinn, but she held her own quite well, and I hope she gets more chances to shine in the future, especially considering this movie could help save the DCEU from collapsing in on itself, which seemed almost inevitable the last couple of years. I can't wait to see this again in IMAX when it officially releases December 21st. And that's your Weekly Thunder for December 17th. I'm Sexy Thor, and follow us on all the socials, and listen to us on all the catchers and platforms. And most important, remember to drink, fight, and make your ancestors proud.